Blog Talk Radio. You are listening to Shriek Fest Radio. Ah, welcome to Shriek Fest Radio. This is Denise Gossett, the festival founder and director, and your host for the day. So, Shriek Fest Radio has been on air for eight years. I cannot believe it. And this is show number 201. Guys, it is Women in Horror Month. February is, and uh, make sure you give a little extra love to all the women in horror in your life. Super important, because there's a bunch of us out there, and uh, I think it's great that we're getting a little bit of uh, notoriety and appreciation during this month. Shriekfest LA is in its 20th year. It will be October 1st through the 4th, so mark your calendars. Shriekfest Orlando will be the fourth year, and that will be November 7th. Our next Shriekfest Presents, which is when we screen um, classic horror films outside of the festival. We do it every month or every other month. It just depends on what we have in the works. We usually have special guests for Q&A and things like that. So the next one will be coming up. We haven't finalized it quite yet, so I can't announce it, but it will be a good one. And let's see... We have a newsletter you can sign up for on our website. The call-in number today, if you have a question for myself or my guest, is 516-531-9858, 516-531-9858. Or if you're shy and you have a question and would rather not be on the air, you can always tweet at ShriekFest or ShriekFest at AOL.com, and I will periodically glance at those and get your questions answered. So let's see, our next cutoff date for submissions is March 1st. We have features and short scripts, features and shorts films. We have music videos. We have horror, thriller, sci-fi, fantasy categories. We added a bunch of new categories this year. So we have best director, actress, actor, cinematography, and editing, editing added in, which is kind of exciting. And I think that is all of the announcements. I'm really excited about my guest today. Like I said, it's Women in Horror Month, so I ha- I'm having ladies on this month, which is super cool. Uh, her name is Mariana Louie, and she is a producer, art direction. She's even done some visual effects. And she was the producer of our 2019 official selection, White Wolf Zombie Killer, which was a super cool short. And welcome to the show, Mariana. Hi, thanks for having me, Denise. How are you? I am super good. It's the middle of the week. I know it took me forever to figure out why people called it hump day. And now that (laughs) I have been working full time for a while, I now understand. (laughs) (laughs) Right, exactly. You got to make it over that hump and then you're almost to the weekend. (laughs) Yes, but this is is a a really nice way to, to... and hump day. Yay! Well, I am so glad you're here, and um, I'm super excited because, you know, usually we have directors on or writers on, and we don't always get the producers on. So this is really wonderful, and I know for everyone out there listening, they're going to want to know some certain things. So first, I want to know, how did you get into this industry? What, like, what made you say, this is what I want to do? Well, um, probably... My love of figuring out problems because Hmm. even when I was younger, if I grew up in an apartment complex, uh, if we were all bored, I would just kind of come up with games for everyone to play and like organize everybody. And uh, we made a own version of like capture the flag. Uh, So that just kind of continued as I got older, like, oh, somebody needs to plan this event and I would plan the event. So when the opportunity came up to produce uh, Circle Jerks, which is my first short film that I produced, I was like, oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, you mean it's just producing things, figuring it out, and, like, getting things together? Like, I really love watching things come together. So it just kind of naturally played on my interests because I love movies. Who doesn't? Um, So it's just cool. It happened to work out. Wow. So uh, were you – Born in L.A.? Like, where'd you grow up? And how? what made you decide to, I got to move to L.A.? Um, well, I was born in Mexico City, 
But I moved to L.A. when I was two, so that was decided for me. (laughs) Ah, fate. But I love it here. (laughs) Yes, exactly. I love it here. I visited all over, but I always say, oh, okay, I get why people move to L.A. I really like our weather. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's the best. That is the best thing. I wish we could get rid of some of the smog, but (laughs) the weather's great. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so when you moved here at two, so and then you had always kind of been an organizer, a planner, and events and all that sort of thing. Um, and you said your first film was a short film called Circle, Jer- Circle Jerks. Anything to do with the band? No, I wish. I really wish. <laughs> I know, it's right? a cool name. So we decided. I know. So we decided to take that. But uh, uh, that was interesting to me because it's a sort of an exploration of, of the different multiple personalities of one person that is suffering from insomnia and they can't sleep. Oh, wow. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so it's kind of like their, their, their anger comes out and is, you know, a really big driving force in the film. Their, like, little kid is there, like the kind of, like, little kid side of yourself that's just kind of sad. Uh, there's, like, a goofy side. Uh, there's a, like, depressed kind of emo side. So it was a very interesting kind of, like, interpretation of internal dialogues that we all have. Mm, wow. And how did you get involved with White Wolf Zombie Killer? Well, uh, Kenneth Louis, the writer-director, uh, is my husband, so he comes up with ideas, and then I either support them, which, and I say, <laughs> yeah, this is a great idea. I think we can totally do this. Or I say, you know what, maybe you should chew on that one a little bit more. <laughs> Um, like every marriage, right? I, <laughs> right. But uh, it works out because I really enjoy um, supporting the artist's vision. So when he has a really cool idea, like White Wolf Zombie Killer, I'm like, oh, my God, yes, let's make this happen. Uh, we had so many shoot days on this because it's an action film. So yeah. we had rehearsals. We had some stunt coordinators. We had stunts on it. Um, we had... Puppet effects, there was a lot going on. So it just sounded really cool. Yeah, you know, it it is very cool. It turned out really wonderful. And what I think is interesting about it is there's no dialogue. Yes, it's all through the that, action. And you're watching and you, you, you figure everything out without, you know, a bunch of people talking. Yeah, and I love that because we – um, I really wanted to take advantage of the medium because there's certain things you can only really do with a film. So mm-hmm. in this case, we, we let the actor, you know, Jason Frost, who's an amazing actor, um, mm-hmm. sort of emote through his body. And to, to make it even harder, give him a little extra challenge. We gave him uh, these like really thick goggles throughout the whole thing. So you don't get his eyes either. So right. it's, it's really amazing what Jason did with the performance. It's we are so I'm so impressed. I mean, I knew he could do it, but the way he did it is just really cool. Yeah, yeah, he did a great job. Anybody out there listening, if you have not seen it, you got to track it down because if you like zombies, this is a really fun one. A lot of action, a lot of cool stuff. Um, how you said it took a long time to shoot? Like how many days? Oh, goodness. Um, Well, since most of the crew had full-time jobs, we had to do it on weekends. Um, And so we, I want to say maybe five weekends. So it was at like 10 days for for an about 12-minute short. Um, And most of it was really because we were – using uh the house we were using we'd have to set it up do the set dressing um which i helped art direct do the makeup there's a lot of makeup effects wait for Mm -hmm. that to happen and then once everything is set up now we have the lights set up now we go and then at the end we had to budget for tearing down cleaning up the actors (laughs) putting the house back together so yeah so that was that was a process but i'm really excited glad and proud of the way it came out because uh you can't tell that it was over so many weekends 
No, no, not at all. It just flows Which is great. Now, okay, so you worked on projects that had dialogue, and then, of course, this one. Which was harder? Um, probably, you know, it's interesting. I, I never thought about it in terms of which one is harder because, mm-hmm. to me, it's just more of an interesting problem to figure out. Right. So for this one, there was a lot of blocking that had to be figured out and framing because a lot of the story is told in the composition as well, not just Jason's body language and his acting, but just the way we compose it, you know, what overtakes the frame, what's in the foreground, what's in the background, how is the lighting. So a lot of that non-dialogue we had to figure out through blocking and lighting. And so that was an interesting uh, problem to solve, but I don't know if it was harder. It was just, it's just different because with dialogue, you also have, um, I mean, the same things apply to dialogue. It's just, you know, blocking, framing, lighting, all of that also affects it. And then with with dialogue, when you have actors, especially if there's two uh, talking to each other, not like in Circle Jerks, where it's just one guy (laughs) talking to himself. Oh. But when you have two, yeah, yeah, we had one guy. We actually had a lot of people ask us if we had cast twins because they're so different. But no, just uh, Bill Zappi was our actor in that one. Uh, He was just fantastic. He actually was in an Oscar-nominated short called Day One, after that and so uh-huh. I'm like yeah now everybody else knows how cool Bill is like, we, we, we <laughs> right. saw it first. you so lost him he's not going to want to come now <laughs> <laughs> oh wow that's cool yeah yeah so with dialogue I think it's cool to just watch actors work with each other because you know, we, we try to find actors with good chemistry with each other sure. and then it's just easy because a lot of it just comes in casting if you cast the right people the actors really bring it home, They how they interpret the character and how they drive the dialogue as well. Because dialogue is just words on a page, but when you actually get the actors doing their craft, it's really cool to watch. Yeah. Now, did you know Jason or did you have a casting session and find him? Um, Both. We know J- Jason. We worked with him on 1E4. Um, which is another short we did that's based on a short story by Joey Camo by the same name, um, which is sort of a love affair that happens through the personal ads in a newspaper. So not mm-hmm. horror. It's like we, we joke it's our sad bastard short. It's very <laughs> arty. <laughs> um, so, but with White Wolf, it was interesting. We actually went through few different casting options just because it is it is a zombie movie there is lots of action in it but at the end of the day it is a story I feel about fatherhood and Mm. so because there's no dialogue we had some interesting faces that are more kind of I guess they're typically like action comic faces with um, some more you know thinner faces and just kind of trying to figure out what we're trying to tell the audience, which is the type of casting. And when Jason came in, um, he was very handsome. Uh, with his <laughs> style of acting and his face, we were like, okay, that says it. Because we needed not just someone who could do the action, but someone who could communicate the softness and the tenderness as well. Sure. Any mm-hmm. memorable moments that happened while shooting? Like anything that like you had to we got to change this now because this didn't work out or this was super funny. Anything like that happen? Um, yes. Our zombies were originally, we were playing with them being totally like Ken doll nude to just add another extra kind of layer of weirdness. Uh-huh. Um, but the, getting the latex to stay in that area and not Uh look like wrinkly latex was really challenging. So we just decided, you know what, we're already adding all this time with like setting up the house, having to tear down the house, making everybody up. Let's just make it easier on everybody. And how much really is it adding to the story? We're like, "Mm, it's not really about the zombies. It's about White Wolf, our protagonist. So we're like, okay, we don't need it. So that, that was a, an interesting little challenge. So that kind of 
one of one of those challenges that actually worked out for the better. Oh yeah. Which it's amazing how many times that happens on a set, you know, where like in the moment you're like, oh gosh, this is like the worst thing that could happen, and then it turns out to have been one of the best things that could have happened. Because that would have changed yeah, your whole feel of the film. Oh, definitely. It probably would have pushed it more into like a sci-fi kind of vibe, I think. Right. Because um, right now it's super western, which is what we were going for with the with the duster, um, a lot of the the lighting. Um, we're going for kind of like a western inspiration, and so we're like, eh, mm. you know what? The, the the weird Ken doll look doesn't really fit the theme either. So it really worked right. out. Um, <laughs> right. Well, I'm glad it worked out that way. Now, what would advice be to people who want to produce and work with their significant other? Um, definitely separate your your I guess discussions about the films from your actual relationship because you you really or at least for me I kind of go into it like that is a separate job for me Mm -hmm. like I have a mental compartment in my brain where like okay we're talking about our projects now like we just finished up a feature film um, that we've been working on for a while uh, called Artists in Agony and so whenever we're talking about that I say okay like I have to have the the producer hat on and like, okay, no, I'm going to veto this. It doesn't make sense. These are the reasons why. Um, whereas in, in like my personal life, I'm not really, I'm very go with the flow. I'm very like, Oh, whatever you want to eat, honey. Like to the point where he gets irritated. Cause he's like, Look, just tell me what you want to eat. I'm like, no, really, it's okay. Whatever you want. <laughs> so and as a producer a mode. Oh no. Yeah. I will. I will. Like I like listening and like why do you like this idea and what do you like about it and please you know <laughs> explain it to me first and if I'm really just not buying it I'm like look the the work the amount of work it's going to take to do this isn't going to do what you want it's going to not pay out so no we're not going to do that no <laughs> <laughs> okay so Kenneth if you're listening and she will not answer where she wants to go to dinner you just have to ask her in producer mode. That's right. right? So like, for the film, <laughs> where do you want to eat? Because <laughs> then you'll be like, oh, okay, well, why didn't you say so? Okay, so here's where I would really like to go. <laughs> exactly. So now, now that can be like code word when he really needs you to, to not be wishy-washy and just step forward with a decision. <laughs> he can say, all right, pr- put your producer hat on. <laughs> right. So... You just mentioned a feature. Tell me more. Oh, uh, so it is a mockumentary about hitmen and their misadventures. Mm, um, sounds fun. Yes, yes. So we call it our uh, little punk rock baby because we really <laughs> wanted to make it grungy, very kind of underground feeling, very DIY, like a lot of the choices we made um, make it look very like, is this real? Because the test screenings we had, we had a couple friends who were like, wait, these these aren't real, right? <laughs> <laughs> Like, which, which is exactly uh, what we wanted. Yeah. So it's, that's it's, perfect. it's a very dark comedy. So if you're a fan of like yeah. happiness, uh, which is one of my favorite dark comedies that my oh, mom yeah. sees. I saw it with my mom. Don't watch happiness with your mom. Unless your mom likes <laughs> that kind of stuff. Mine really didn't. Um, uh, yeah, not into the pedophilia in the movie. But if you like dark yeah. comedy and just kind of like po- poking fun at like sort of psychological horrors of, of humankind it's it's fine sure. um so we just finished it we're prepping it to go out to festivals uh so we're gonna see how that goes we're super excited nice. about it have some so Kenneth cool directed talent again. in it yes Kenneth directed it 
Uh, Jason Frost from White Wolf is in this one as, as well. Oh, my gosh. Um, that's great. I know you get to hear him talk this time. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> he's hilarious. He's, he's probably the first guy we got to sign on to this project. And uh, his scenes are hilarious. I, I would love to work with Jason for the rest of my life. Wow. You know, people say that like they'll find their people early on and then they just carry them on every project. So it sounds like it's true for you guys. Yeah, definitely. Because I think when you find someone you can collaborate with um, and work through, you know, different challenges, different artistic um, just conversations, Mm -hmm. it's really, it makes something that ordinarily could be really difficult like filmmaking there's just so many pieces um and it's complex and, and you know denise how how hard it can get if you have people you right. get along with and that you can collaborate with and will help you figure out these different problems then absolutely we'll hold on to them forever right um so when you say artists in agony is finished do you mean through post and everything, or just done shooting? It is through post, through sound. Oh, graphic. my gosh. Uh, I know. It is done, done. We're super proud. We had we, we took ourselves out to a little seafood buffet to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, that yeah, is really, done. I know it's not horror, but it will be fun to see it regardless. Thank you. And um, let me know if, you know, if you want me to, tweet anything out to help promote because I'm I'm a fan of you guys so I will definitely help you do that. Thank you, Denise. And we're a fan of you. Shriekfest is probably my favorite festival I've ever been to. It's been oh, awesome. Thank you. That means a lot. So um I, I you know when you said you were that you were born in Mexico City um, mm-hmm. I had introduced you at the beginning of the show as Mariana. It's actually Mariana, right? It is. It's Mariana. Um, a lot of people have, well, not a lot, but some people, maybe a quarter of the people I've ever run into have an issue with the R in Spanish. So right. I just go with what my kindergarten teacher said when she first pronounced my name in English was, oh, Mariana. So I'm like, okay, I guess that's what my name is in English. That's what I go with. <laughs> you just, you'll answer no matter what, right? Unless it's something bad, then right. you can just fake like you didn't hear. <laughs> right. Okay, so where can people find you? Is there a website for your work? Where are you guys at? Yes, we have uh, Mental Pictures Productions on Instagram, and that's mental.pictures.production. Ooh, um, I got to find that, too. I don't think we're... Okay, mental pictures. Productions on Instagram. Okay. I will look. Um, yes, we've probably tagged you a couple times from our Shriek Fest posts. Okay, um, good. And then, okay. and then uh, a lot of our work is on Kenneth's personal websites, kennethlouis.com. Uh, we'll actually be coming up with a website specifically for our feature film. Um, and so I'll send that info to you once it's up. There's nothing up okay. yet. But the the framing for Artists in Agony is about, it, it's framed as a, they say you should never do this. So, of course, we went ahead and did it. Is it a documentary? <laughs> is that a documentary? <laughs> a movie inside a movie? We broke so many rules. We're like, you know what? If we're going to do our own thing, just Rules be damned. Um, yes, that's you how should it never should do be. A mockumentary. It's your baby. <laughs> You're allowed to do whatever exactly. you want with it. <laughs> exactly. That's what we're like, okay, it's punk rock. <laughs> well, you know, this is what I figured out through all the years of being in this industry. There are rules. Mm-hmm. However, if you break the rule and you're good, the rules don't matter. If you break the rule and you suck, they matter. Right. Makes sense? So let's hope it's the first one for us. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure it will be. So, yes, breaking the rules Thank can you. be done as long as you commit and you're good at what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Um, so our framing is there's a 
media site that is covering this documentary. And so once yeah. we get that site set up, I'll send you that info. Oh, cool. Um, but yeah, that is where you can find us for now. Our most active place is on Instagram. Oh, we also have a Facebook, Mental Pictures Productions on Facebook. Mental Pictures? Uh, okay. Our, yes. Our logo Go is like likes, a Rorschach everyone. test that looks like a butterfly. It says Mental Pictures. So that is okay. us. Okay. I'm going to find that, too. I think I probably already have, but just in case. I, I noticed that I was following you on Instagram with Shriekfest, but not myself, so I just gave you a follow on there. And Hooray! Plus one. I, I will check uh, on – oh, yeah, I see. Oh, I've already liked you on Facebook, so there we go. It looks like you have two. Yay, oh, I love being liked. Thank you. Do you have two, or is there two <laughs> mental pictures? <laughs> No, there's just one. Um, it has the butterfly logo. Butterfly, like I got black you. Black and okay, white, Rorschach yep. test, ink blot. Mm-hmm. Okay, I already got it. Excellent. Now, what about Twitter? We don't do Twitter. Oh, um, Mariana, you have homework now. It's a you little You have too to get on Twitter. for me. I what? Can't, you know what? I, I'm more of a visual person, so I like taking pictures and posting it online. But Twitter is too much like at and then following conversations and part one no, out of I know. 16. Like I like following other people's conversations, but we don't we don't have one. <laughs> you know, I, I completely agree with you. And Twitter sucks. They, they all suck, quite honestly. But you have to do it. So this is your homework. You and Kenneth have got to create a page. Do it for mental pictures and just get it started. And once a week, do a tweet. Because the importance with Twitter, you can follow anyone. They do not have to follow back. But I cannot tell you how many times if you do contact someone on Twitter, they're open to talking to you. This includes financiers. This includes you know, uh, famous actors or B actors. Like People will actually engage on Twitter. So it's super important for you to develop your fan base there too because when it's down the road and you're making your next feature – and you need money, and you can go to people and say, hey, we have X amount of followers on Twitter, X on Instagram, and Facebook. They're going to be like, whoa, because they know you already have a fan base set aside waiting for your next project. I'll talk to Ken about it. Yep, you got to do it. You got to end. So I know you did it. You have to tag Shriekfest in one of your tweets this week. <laughs> I always make everyone do this, and they're like, days, no. But seriously, they do come back and go, you were right. It was important because your fans need to be able to find you on all the platforms. So you may as well just start building mm-hmm. it up now. I'm not saying you got to go on there every day and do something once a week, just once a week, give a little update. And it can be the end. You can go in to things like Hootsuite for free and connect your accounts. So when you post once, it goes to all of them. Very cool. So check that out. Yeah. Check out Hootsuite because then it's, you know, one time doing the post, but it'll hit all of them and it'll be good. It'll, it'll really help. I trust me on this. Thanks for that. All right, Mariana, it was uh, wonderful chatting with you and catching up, and please keep me posted on everything. And like I said, if you tweet to me at Shriekfest, I will retweet and help you get the word out and um, tell Kenneth I said hello. Will do. Thanks so much, Denise. Thank you for having me, and I hope you have another awesome woman in horror following up for February. And uh, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And also, because this is Shriekfest's 20th year, I haven't even announced this yet, but I'm going to tell you, and anyone who's listening, I guess, would be, um, because it's going to be our 20th year, I'm going to do a reunion party so all past people can come as my guest. Yes, Yes. so it's going to be fun. So I'll keep you posted on that because I think it will be a blast. Yes, please do. I would love to see everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, my dear, you have a great rest of your day, and I will chat with you soon. Okay, thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.
you are listening to Shriek Fest Radio. Real quickly, guys, keep following your dreams. Write down those goals, and I'll see you back here next time. Happy Women in Horror Month. All right, bye-bye.